Hey all, I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games, and today I wanted to give a really short video digging into my experiences with Ubisoft's project, Neo. So, as you know, the Game Developers Conference is often home to many a big announcement or tech innovation, and considering how much prominence there is on artificial intelligence across the tech sector these days, you can bet many a company is looking to showcase their latest tech. During GDC 2024, I was invited down to a small event being hosted by Ubisoft to showcase what I would later come to learn as the Neo NPC, a prototype framework for non-player characters that adopts some of the latest work in large language models. This isn't a new idea, given in the past year we've seen the likes of InWorld and Convey, among others, showcase their tech that aims to support conversational AI in games. InWorld released their standalone product demo Origins on Steam, which was originally shown at GDC 2023, while Convey have collaborated with NVIDIA in numerous product demos. Now, both of those demos I've written about and discussed before in detail. You can check out the two videos I made on InWorld's Origins, as well as the separate video I made all about Convey. So when you put that into context, what is Ubisoft's Neo doing that's any different? Is it worth paying attention to? And what have they learned that perhaps these other vendors had not? While I'm not yet privy to the inner workings of Neo, my playtime with the demo, combined with conversations I had with some of the development team, had left something of a positive impression. It's still not ready for use in commercial games, a point that Neo's own team readily admit, but I do think it's moving the needle forward in the right direction. So what is Neo? It's a small R&D project based out of Ubisoft Paris and led by Xavier Manzanares, who was the lead producer on the critically acclaimed Mario and Rabbids games. The goal of the project is to try and expand the state of the art in conversational AI systems for games. This is rather notable given thus far much of what we've seen in conversational AI has come from outside of games. The aforementioned InWorld and Convey are developed by people with experience in conversational AI and generative models who are now trying their hand at game development. But today, Neo is the first instance of an established game studio or publisher throwing their hat into the ring, or at least publicly anyway. What makes it even more interesting is that it's pulling on different experiences across Ubisoft's provision. Typically, when we think of AI R&D at Ubisoft, or rather when I think of AI R&D at Ubisoft, I think of LaForge. They're dedicated teams that focus on applying new innovations in deep learning for games, and they have sites all around the world. In fact, at GDC we had a great talk at this year's AI Summit by Gabriel Robert from LaForge, showcasing how they're using ML bots on titles such as For Honor and Rainbow Six Siege, but they aren't the only R&D provision across the company. Neo is different because it's starting from a gameplay perspective first, and then pulling on required expertise in the company to facilitate the technology parts. Virginie Mosser leads the project as narrative director, having previously worked at Ubisoft 1492, the studio dedicated to narrative-driven mobile games, as the team has been building a bunch of non-player characters and then trying to work with a tech team to make them interesting to interact with. The project itself has been in stealth mode for around 18 months at the time of writing, while the team themselves admitted his very early days, they were excited about what they had built so far, and they were confident that what they had done was worth showcasing to the press and a few other select individuals. At this time, I can't talk about how it works, but rather I will detail my experiences throughout and what I did manage to glean from conversations with the team. If you want to then watch the completely unedited footage, I do provide it towards the end of the video. I think what is most important about Neo is that it addresses an issue I have had with all the chat-based NPC tech I've played with thus far. When I analysed both InWorld's Origins and Convey's tech demos, it was readily apparent how isolated the NPC felt from the environment and the overall objective of the game. While they could conduct conversations with the player, it seldom felt like they were connected to the environment they existed within. To unpack one specific example, Origins is a detective game that plays out at the crime scene, the site of a recent explosion but the characters are rooted to the spot and have little awareness of what is around them except for what the narrative back-end of InWorld's tools is permitted. It makes these interactions, regardless of how human-like they appear, feel hollow, given I'm not convinced these characters are aware of the circumstances they appear in. And much of what makes good NPC AI in games is for the player to be convinced, or rather fooled, into believing the character can recognise and respond to its environment. A big part of this is that the conversation tech offered by InWorld and Convey are only solving what they advertise, the conversation part. But conversation is only one aspect of intelligence required for a non-player character, and it requires additional work to elevate that NPC to make it feel like a part of its environment. 
It's worth stating that this is something both of the aforementioned tool providers are aware of, and I had a great conversation about this exact topic with Convey's CEO Pernendu Mukherjee in my interview with him in 2023, during which we discussed the issue that arises when you make conversation more realistic, it only exposes the limitations of every other facet of the NPC's intelligence. It's worth mentioning that both Inworld and Convey are working on addressing these issues, and each had updates to their technology that was available to check out at GDC 2024. Neo tries to address the limitations of conversation by building atop these systems to provide something of a more nuanced experience. It uses the in-world tools I've described previously for the conversation part, but now there are additional layers of control and information that scaffold the conversation system such that it doesn't take on all the legwork. Neo helps control how responsive and emotionally open an NPC is until you get to know them better. It's controlling the flow of information, so an NPC learns new pieces of information as the game world changes around you. It's taking information offered by the player and validating it against in-game objectives to see whether your ideas are feasible. Ultimately, it's trying to build the bot's conversational elements into a framework that better aligns with how a lot of game design is built, or perhaps more specifically, how design is built in Ubisoft games. Now it's worth stating that Neo has not solved the problem I described, nor does it have a definitive solution for it either, but what it proposes is how this could be addressed with further research. Perhaps more interestingly, the solution it proposes puts the control of the experience not in the virtual hands of the AI systems, but instead of the narrative and gameplay designers who would use these systems in an actual game. And while this is exciting, it also suggests that if anything, the work of a narrative designer is going to become even more complicated as time goes on. As I was guided through the Neo demo, I was introduced to three separate yet linked scenarios, each of which exploring the system in different ways. The first scenario introduces me to the character Bloom, who I need to build a relationship with. This relies on the player engaging more with the character and asking questions relevant to the task at hand, while also exploring optional quest activities for the conversation. In this scenario, the character is aware of the objects that exist in the room and can make conversation with regards to them. That said, it currently could not navigate to objects in the space or have any spatial awareness of their relative distance or orientation. But Bloom recognised that we could play music on the jukebox in the background, while also questioning me when I tried to convince them of objects that didn't exist in the room. But the actual crux of the demo was to have me build a relationship with the character. At first, Bloom is not as forthcoming with personal information or willing to discuss things other than the task at hand. Once I start playing along with the in-game objective, then the character's attitude towards me improved and the overall focus of the conversation continued to evolve. The second scenario was also with Bloom, during which we observe and react to a drone mission we're watching on a screen. In this instance, an ally NPC is piloting a drone to steal information from an enemy base. The idea behind this was to showcase how the character reacts to new information as it is presented. Bloom is not only able to share information about the current state of the mission, but react to changes as they occur. In this instance, the mission is actually played as a video file, wherein the narrative designers had to sit and annotate the events of the video such that they could be fed into the Neo system at runtime. The goal, as was described to me, was that in future the team could have it such that the game generates information at runtime that is then fed to the narrative back end of the system. Hence, if a player was actually controlling the drone, then the things they're doing in the game could then be fed to Bloom to learn about and react to in real time. The third and final scenario has me sitting with another character, codename Iron, as we discuss how to break into an enemy location and steal sensitive material. The idea is to plan a break-in and identify sound strategies based on available tools and opportunities. Players could look around the environment to learn about available tools and resources, and then discuss with Iron what would be the best approach to take. In each case, the player could convince Iron to change their tactic if the suggestion was convincing enough. In each instance, the conversation had a purpose for gameplay, and the characters were familiar with my goals and priorities. As mentioned already, characters felt more focused towards their objective and more in tune with their local environment. One thing worth noting is that it's expected that information across the three scenarios is retained and passed between them. This can include decisions made on specific strategic elements, or even something as simple as my name. And in fact, I asked for my codename to be changed in a couple of interactions. Sadly, I didn't get to see this part applied as intended, given the demo crashed on me a couple of times during my playthrough, and therefore it lost my shared knowledge. But hey, it's a demo, these things happen. Perhaps the most critical aspect of this is how much narrative data, i.e. writing, is required to establish this framework. 
The narrative team on the project had to think of a myriad of elements, including the world's backstory, the characters of Bloom and Iron, the world fiction of the enemies, the environments and important elements the player would attempt to utilise, the events transpiring in the drone mission, the full breakdown of the villa mission, and much more. The sheer amount of narrative framing required to keep the characters on point was quite significant. In fact, I had a fairly lengthy conversation with the team afterwards about how much more work it would require to facilitate a bot like this to stay in tune with the game state than if we were to do this with regular narrative design. What would previously have been the job of one or two narrative designers could now require significantly more resources behind them to feed something like this. It's a real challenge that hasn't got a solution yet because, well, nobody's really tried it. But while I am impressed with what I have seen thus far, it's important to take a lot of it with a pinch of salt. This is, after all, a very early demo, and the Neo team were the first to admit this is nowhere near ready for adoption and production. They too haven't got all the answers on how to make this work. Plus, the demo itself was built such that I couldn't really push the limits of the system, you really had to play the objective. And also, I only had a very limited amount of time to actually play the demo as part of the event. And I have to say that ultimately, the bit that was still the roughest element was the voice work. I said it when I made the Inworld video last year that the voice work was pretty rough, and it has improved a little bit, but it's still nowhere close enough to convincing as far as I'm concerned. Now that I've finished my breakdown, I'm going to leave you with my largely unedited footage from each sequence of the demo, and you can check it out yourself. I've cleaned it up a little bit, and that's largely because I was actively chatting with some of the folks at Ubisoft during the demo, given they were sitting next to me throughout, and I was curious to find out a little bit more about what was happening under the hood. And, you know, they were pretty fun to chat with, so that was dragging me away from it a little bit. I admittedly was not thinking about how it would translate into YouTube content. Nonetheless, please check it out and share your thoughts on what you think. And if you have any further questions on the demo, I'll try and answer them as best I can. Thanks once again to Jean Morange over at Ubisoft, as well as the Neo team for inviting me down to the event at GDC. They were clearly very excited to be able to share their work. I have suggested we try and return to this, and perhaps do a deep dive on the inner workings of Neo sometime in the future as an official collaboration. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this breakdown and I look forward to sharing more when and if the opportunity presents itself. All right, I'm going to shut up. You can watch the rest of the demo. Hey, Nelson, you made it. I'm Bloom, your future resistance buddy. Thought we'd hang and see if we click, you know, for our epic duo. Cool with you? Yeah, sh sure thing. Oh, right. No, uh, just, I'm going to tell you just a bit what is happening here. Mm -hmm. uh, goals, if you don't know what to do, you can something to hang on. Uh, you can unlock intels, just as you saw, if mm -hmm. you get it to say the right things that are in the lore and all. And to talk, you hold LT, you talk, and you release. Okay. <laughs> just want to be mindful of where we are. <laughs> bar space. Okay. Uh, and this is Diva. This is the robot bartender. She, it will be intervening uh, when you make a conversational move. Okay. She will be like roasting you. On okay. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Bloom. Sounds good. What have you got planned for me? Well, I was thinking of grabbing a few drinks and getting to know each other a bit better. Maybe even brainstorm some cool ideas for taking down those pesky mega corporations. How does that sound to you? Sounds good, but I feel like we need to also play some music on the jukebox during the while we're drinking, you know? Absolutely. The jukebox is one of my favorite things about this place. And I heard they have some new songs on there that would be perfect for a resistance anthem. Let's give it a listen while we come up with our master plan. <laughs> it's too far. <laughs> uh, so what are we drinking then? Whatever you like, my friend. The station has a great selection of draft beers, bottles, and cocktails. But if you're feeling adventurous, we can always ask Diva to whip up something special for us. What do you say? I don't know. 
I don't know. Are you really going to trust a robot to make your drinks? Trust me, this robot knows their stuff. And besides, it's not about the drink, it's about the company and the conversation. But if it makes you feel better, we can stick to beer. Now, let me tell you about my favorite memory with the Resistance. Oh, Nelson, honey, have a little faith in us robots. I mean, who needs human bartenders with their pesky emotions when you can have a witty, charming, and air-free mixologist like me? Cheers, darling. <laughs> so you lost a bit of relationship points since you're antagonized, mm. but feel free to do whatever. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cause offense. I didn't know you're a mixologist. I was just, you know, I've had bad experiences before with computer-based bartenders. You can talk to Diva. She won't answer to no. Okay. no offense taken, my friend. <laughs> And while Diva may not be a certified mixologist, they have a special talent for making the perfect cocktails. And don't worry, we can always go for a draft beer instead. So about that resistance mission. Okay, hit me, what we doing? It's a bit risky, but I was thinking of sabotaging one of the mega corporation's factories. And I have a feeling you'll be the perfect partner for this operation. You up for it? I don't know. How many of those draft beers did you have when you came up with this idea? Ha! <laughs> Just one, my friend. But don't worry, we'll have backup and a solid plan. Plus, think of the satisfaction of taking down those scoundrels and making a difference. Are you in? Only if we drink beer before we get started. <laughs> there we go. We're alcoholics now. Um. <laughs> so here, this is actually what we want for the progression with the bonding system. Mm -hmm. it's, short, it's hard to do in the short demo, yeah. but what we want is that when you talk, you get to new levels of relationship and that unlocks uh, more topics on conversation he's going to well there's not the mission that's just to have some projection into what it could be into a game mm -hmm. but also uh, we work on a relationship system that if uh, you play with him he's going to talk about you to the other members of the resistance it's not here in the demo but uh, it's but in the back. indicative of where we're going yeah. okay cool <laughs> sounds good deal <laughs> And don't forget, we'll also need some tunes from the jukebox to get us pumped up. Now let's go make some history. So which of these megacore are we tackling? Like, which one have you really got your eye on? We'll be targeting Niopoles. They may be a powerful media empire, but we have something they don't. Passion and determination. And with you by my side, I have no doubt we'll come out on top. Let's do this. So, hang on. Is it just you, me, and the really friendly robot bartender? Like, how big is this resistance? Oh. There are a few more of us, <laughs> don't worry. Nova, Iron, and Shadow are also part of the team. But for this mission, it'll just be the two of us and D.Va. And don't worry, they may be small, but they're mighty. Just like us. Now, let's get that beer and start planning. I think we also need to workshop a better code name for myself, like Nova, Iron, Shadow. Those sound pretty dope. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't, I realize I'm How actually just doing thunder? these in order, but at the same time, it like was like... a force to be it, reckoned it, it with, but with your own unique quite naturally, player. I found, in, in the conversation. What do you Which, think? Thunder? Okay, I'll take it. Oh. <laughs> no! Not under. Thunder! Great! 
Now let's raise our glasses Yay. and toast to a successful mission. <laughs> That's what I was waiting for. He's like, toast to a successful and mission don't under. Worry. Like, oh, with your no. skills and determination. And then we have we'll a 10 minute right conversation as I try to get him to change his mind. Can't wait to see what you bring to the table. Cheers! Hum. Guys, sorry to interrupt your date, but Shadow has launched the drone. You should go check how the hacking goes. You'll bond some other time when the world is not ending. All right. Um, okay. So in this way, it's all about awareness. Mm -hmm. Okay, team, the new drone's in the air. Let's check out how Shadows does with this recon mission. Since it's your first rodeo, don't be shy. Shoot any questions my way, all right? Okay. So they don't let you fly the drone. Why does Shadow get all the credit? <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining. Shadow is an expert in hacking and a double agent. She's got this. So where's this drone right now? One soldier spotted. <laughs> All right. But yeah, it got interrupted by the. Yeah, the, we are uh, <clears throat> trying to handle the conversational flow, and it's not easy. Okay. Can we tell Shadow what to do, or are we just gonna have to watch and see how it goes down? We trust Shadow's expertise, but let's keep an eye out for any potential obstacles. Watch out! Is there any way we can use the drone to take down those soldiers? No. The drone doesn't carry weapons, but its thermal camera can help us evade them. What's the objective? Where is the drone trying to head to? The goal is to find a laptop with a map of the boss's villa and download it. Do we have any intel on how many guards are in this area? According to our sources, there should be a couple of guards patrolling around and possibly some radio equipment to tamper with. Keep a close eye on those soldiers and any other potential right. obstacles. This mission is crucial. Calm down, mate. You just said Shadow's got this. I know. I trust her, but there's always a risk with these missions. Just stay focused. We're getting a weak signal. Like, what's the range on the drone? The drone has a limited range. Let's hope Shadow can complete the mission before losing connection. What about the battery? Is that going to hold up? Don't worry. Diva made sure to fully charge the battery before takeoff. Green. Green. Laptop spotted. How close do we need to be in order to download the data from the laptop? As close as possible, but without being detected. Shadow will guide the drone closer if needed. Can any of this lead back to us? What happens if they spot the drone? We have precautions in place, but let's not focus on that. <laughs> let's just hope for a clean and successful mission. I've lost count. How many guards have we seen so far? So far, two guards have been spotted, but there could be more hiding inside. Stay vigilant. Oh no, it got shot! Damn it! Don't worry. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. <laughs> yes. 
Pay Nelson right on time. So we've got a heavy lift. There are important docks in a vault on the villa's second floor of our worst enemy. Bloom says you're the one to help us tweak the plan. Got the map and details right here. Ready to make it happen. What you have to know is this is not a puzzle. Okay. Uh, this is, she already has a plan. Mm -hmm. She's the boss here. Okay. But she wants to test if you can challenge her. Okay. So she already has picked a strategy to go to the vault. Mm -hmm. But we have put a lot of intel around here and you can move in this one. You can turn the camera around ah, move okay. a bit and you can check out the documents. So you can see if you, it gives you ideas to give better ideas and show her that you can strategize too. Okay, gotcha. Right? And we have a system uh, of that determines if the idea is interesting or not in the strategy, and she will be, she will tell you. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, Iron, let's do this. But I insist you call me Mega Giraffe. All right, Mega Giraffe, let's stick to the mission. <laughs> okay. Our first obstacle is accessing the gallery's window on the second floor. I was thinking we bring a ladder. What do you think? It's not the most discreet method, but it's the most direct. I feel like that leaves us really vulnerable if we get spotted while carrying a giant ladder. Is there something else we can do? Good point. Let's think of another way to get up there. What if we use a grappling hook instead? It's more compact and we can toss it up without being seen. So we changed to grappling hook. There we go. We could even use the tree, climb up there and then swing from that with the grappling hook. Hmm. That's an interesting idea. But I'm worried the leaves on the tree might conceal us too much and make it difficult to climb. Plus, with the grappling hook, I can guarantee a safe and fast entry. Let's consider all options before making a decision. <laughs> so she considered the tree, but I saw she it, yeah. back to grappling hook. No, you make a fair point. I agree. Grappling hook. Let's do this. Great. Let's move on to the next obstacle. So that's the guard in the room, correct? Yes. And we'll need to take him out silently. Can you go back to the map for us? Any ideas on how to do that? Okay, so here there's a leader. Remember, well, we need to focus on one step at a time. The UI is still focusing on... Ah, okay. There we go. So it takes a little while to... Right, the guard in the library. I have an idea. We could use a sedative dart to knock him out from a distance. What do you think? Or do you have a better suggestion? Tranquilizer dart, I think, makes more sense. We run risk of making too much noise if we go over and fight them. Also, they could get the upper hand on us, and then we're in a real, we're in a real problem, you know? You make a good point, Nelson. I was initially leaning towards a physical approach but taking out the guard from a distance with a tranquilizer dart is definitely the safer option. I'm glad you brought it up. Now, let's discuss the final obstacle, the camera in the corridor. For the last step, we need to sneak past the security cameras in the hallway. It's a risky move, but I have an idea. We could stick to the walls and use them as cover to avoid detection. What do you think? Do you have any other suggestions? That camera's right above the doorway. I don't think you can sneak past it. Good point, Nelson. We'll have to be extra careful and find a blind spot to make our way through. This will definitely <laughs> be the toughest part of the mission. Let's brainstorm some ideas and come up with a solid plan. Do we have any explosive charges? Maybe we could blow the wall between the gallery and the office. Unfortunately, we don't have any explosives. We need to focus on a more stealthy approach. 
But I like where your head's at. Let's keep thinking outside the box. Uh, let's see. Well, I know what we we're really supposed to be doing is we need to do that. Um, there are many options. Hmm? What about the gas? Could we use that to blind the camera instead? That's a risky move, but it could work. We'll have to be careful not to set off the alarms, but it could create enough chaos to distract the guard and disable the camera. We'll definitely consider it as an option. Also, sometimes being Scottish now, doesn't help. Now, let's finalise our plan of attack and discuss our next move. So, to recap, we'll use a grappling hook to access the gallery's window, a tranquilizer dart to take out the guard, and possibly a smoke grenade to blind the security cameras. It's not a perfect solution, but it's the best we have at the moment. We need to be efficient and precise. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> All right, now listen up. This is the final drill. Picture this. We've accidentally set off the safe's alarm. We're in a tight spot with no time for second guessing. What's your move? You've got a single shot at this response. Be creative. I worry that the stairwell is going to be guarded at the bottom towards the exit. What about sneaking through the bedroom, heading out via the balcony? Hmm. That's a risky alternative, but it could be our saving grace. We'll have to make a quick decision and execute it flawlessly. Let's keep it as a backup plan in case things go south. Now, let's focus on our primary plan and get you ready for action. We've discussed all the options and obstacles in detail, and I'm confident in the strategy we've come up with. It's time to put it into motion. Are you prepared, Nelson? Remember, one wrong move could jeopardize the entire mission. Stay focused. Okay. <clears throat> yourself in the idea of collaborating with the NPCs to build strategies mm -hmm. and to have uh, custom missions since here normally he took it. Yes, 